June 2021. Apple was like, Behold, I am Apple. Bow down and worship me. 20 million songs in our Apple Music catalog now support lossless audio with plans to have our entire catalog in lossless by the end of 2021. And literally the same day, Amazon was like, Fall to your knees, grovel and beg for mercy. I am Amazon. Music Unlimited is now Amazon Music HD with 75 million songs in lossless. Look upon my bandwidth and despair. And then Tidal was like, Movies, oh, oh. music. Salutations, everybody. My name is Elon Osborne, and this is my YouTube channel where I talk about movies, audio, and music. So what's the deal with lossless audio? First, let's get some technical things out of the way, shall we? Back in 2001, when the first generation iPod was released to the public, and since Apple is Apple, they were like, we know MP3 is a thing now, but we're gonna go with AAC or advanced audio coding, bitches. Which is actually a good choice back then because AAC generally offers higher sound quality than MP3 when using the same amount of disk space. But even AAC is still a lossy format, meaning some audio information has been lost due to compression which is even more disappointing than this guy's character arc. The quality of an AAC file is measured based on bitrate. The target bit rates of AAC over the years were 128, 192, and 256 kilobits per second. And that's where Apple decided to cap it, 256 kilobits. That was high enough to where the audience was pleased with the sound and pleased with its convenience, being able to have it on the go on your iPod or iPhone or your robot death dog. But now comes the infamous term CD quality. Now you're dealing with bits and sample rates, not bit rates. Uh... Oh yeah. I'll save going into detail about bits and sample rates for another video, because that's its own beast entirely. But technically, CD quality is 1,411 kilobits per second. So almost six times the bit rate of AAC. But the more common numbers associated with CD quality are 16-bit at a sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz. That's when ALAC comes into play, or Apple Lossless Audio Codec. That's Apple's proprietary lossless codec that can support audio up to 32 bits and a sample rate up to 384 kilohertz. <gasps> but Apple's launch of lossless audio on Apple Music only starts at CD quality, 16-bit at 44.1 kilohertz, remember? Apple stated that lossless audio up to 24-bit at 48 kilohertz will be supported on the Mac, iPhone, iPad, and Apple TV, and possibly the robot dog with a future firmware update. But it has to be wired. Yep, at least for now, listening on wired headphones is the only way to get true lossless audio on any Apple device. What? I mean, what is this? Little house on the prairie? I mean, come on, it's 2021. Again, we have robot dogs, but we can't get lossless audio on AirPods. Anyway, AirPods, AirPods Pro, and AirPods Max, don't support lossless because they are still running off Bluetooth. An Apple AAC Bluetooth codec, for now, doesn't support lossless audio. And yes, that includes having AirPods Max physically plugged into your device. What? But I am positive that Apple has been feverishly working their witchcraft and black magic on a new and improved version of Bluetooth that will eventually support lossless audio. But that's not all that happened with the launch of lossless audio. Apple also announced that a very few select albums and songs will be available in high-res lossless audio for the audio files out there. Which albums and songs, you ask? Just kidding. Or am I? All right, so high-res lossless audio? That's 24-bit audio with a sample rate up to 192 kilohertz. <laughs> but again, there's a caveat. Of course. On an iPhone or an iPad, those little lightning to 3.5 millimeter adapters you plug your headphones into only support audio up to 24-bit 48 kilohertz. So to truly get high-res audio, you'll need a dongle deck. 
What did you just call me? DAC stands for Digital to Analog Converter. And the digital to analog converter inside that lightning adapter is just okay. So with high-res audio becoming so widely accessible now, there are so many dongle DACs out there to choose from so that you can enjoy the highest possible quality available. Yes, it's just something else you'll have to buy, but worth it in the end if you're into that sort of thing. So now you might be asking yourself, well, okay then, how do I listen to lossless audio, Mr. Big Shot? First, let's focus on iPhone and iPad. One. Before you do anything in the Apple Music app, be sure you have updated your iOS or iPad OS to version 14.6 or higher. Two. Make sure you have a wired connection to your device, like plugging your old reliable wired headphones from three years ago into that lightning adapter. Three. Now go to your settings app, scroll down to music, tap audio quality, turn on lossless audio, tap Wi-Fi streaming and choose lossless, which you can see in the little gray text that will now support ALAC up to 24 bit, 48 kilohertz. Note. At this point, just as a reminder, unless you have a separate DAC that is much better than the so-so DAC inside your iPhone or iPad, choosing high resolution lossless is pointless. But if you do have a dongle DAC from THX or Rocketfish or Quest style, more power to you. Get that high res up at them cans, know what I'm saying? Now, let's move on to the Mac. One. Again, the first thing is to make sure your OS is up to date. In this case, it will be Mac OS 11.4, Big Sur. Two. Make sure you have a wired connection to your Mac. Three. Open the Apple Music app in the menu bar, choose Music, Preferences, click on the Playback tab. Under Audio Quality, select or deselect Lossless to turn it on or off. And like iOS, you can further specify settings to both streaming or downloading Lossless. Four. I don't know. Congratulate yourself and have a beer? How about the Apple TV 4K, you ask? One. Make sure your TV OS is version 14.6 or later. Two. Connect to an AV receiver via HDMI. Three. Have another beer? Four. Go to the settings app, then select music, select audio quality, then select or deselect lossless. At least when this video was made, you might notice that high res lossless is not an option on Apple TV 4K. I'm sure that will be coming soon enough, since pretty much all AV receivers can already handle high res audio. No dongle DAC required. So hopefully now you know about AAC, CD quality, ALAC, and that the term dongle DAC isn't what you think it means. So now when you listen to songs, how do they sound better? The end. Oh, sure. Okay, okay. First off, let's talk about active listening. That's when you're soaking in the sound waves, doing nothing else but letting the layers of instruments from Tool's 10,000 Days just wash over you and corrupt your subconscious. Then you'll notice a difference. But honestly, even then, it's not going to have the same effect as Eat, Pray, Love did to your Aunt Caroline, who ended up leaving her husband and kids for a life of world travel, vegan food, and an advocate for whatever the f these crystals are. The difference will come in short bursts though, making you realize, whoa, that kick drum has more punch to it now. Those guitars sound more present in the mix. That bass line definitely has more body to it now. Lossless quality has essentially reintroduced that information that was lost when it was compressed. And another thing you might notice is a greater sense of depth. Compressed audio to me has this quintessential sound that I will now try to describe for you. If you're familiar with animation, you know 2D has an X and a Y axis, your vertical and your horizontal planes. 3D animation adds a depth axis or Z axis. So to wrap my head around it personally, I don't think of compression as squashing a waveform from the top and bottom. I think of it as squashing the Z axis to almost nothing. So lossy or compressed audio like AAC, I view in 2D. The picture is there, it just sounds a little flat. And lossless audio, I view as 3D, bringing back that depth, that body, that punch. Now, the other aspect to consider is passive listening. That's when you're doing something else while listening to music, like working at the office, or doing chores around the house, 
or getting rid of a body in the middle of the night. That's where there's like a tricky gray area when comparing lossy to lossless, since your brain's not actively trying to pick out certain details in a song. The average consumer might not even notice a difference, really. But then again, when you're at work, emailing that told Greg again about that progress report he was supposed to turn in three days ago, some elements within a song still might jump out at you when you're listening to Lossless. Well, that drum kit never sounded like that before. So it might be a pleasant surprise even when listening passively. Bottom line is, I am very excited about this jump to lossless audio. It is a step in the right direction that should have happened a long time ago since Apple has literally been in possession of the high quality masters of their entire catalog since the iPod was released in 2001. Yeah. Spotify is also slated to support lossless audio any day now, but as of this recording, they have not released an official statement about it. I can tell the difference, and the difference is pleasing to my ears, and my brain, and my I have found myself going back and listening to albums like I used to in the 90s, start to finish, you know? That's something I missed as of late, to enjoy the album experience, not just listen to a playlist on shuffle. There's a lot of thought that goes into what's included in an album. So I feel like I'm respecting the artist more by listening to one album at a time and now in the same quality as when I popped a CD into my Iowa stereo speaker system back in the day. You should try it. I highly recommend it. And there you have it. When's the last time you listened to an album start to finish? Do you listen to everything in Lossless now? Do you even care about Lossless? Let me know in the comments below. Remember to be kind to each other out there. Don't just watch TV and movies, experience them. And of course, Always be listening.